We're here at UBC with Dolph Schluter to find out how he got his start working with sticklebacks. Uh, at the time, I thought I was interested in a career in veterinary medicine. That idea was sort of maybe came from when I was far younger and never really understood the career possibilities that are available to, to someone like myself who's interested in biology and natural history. Um, you know, gr growing up in an environment where nobody else is interested in biology, the, sort of the natural thing to say was, oh yeah, maybe he'll be a veterinarian. It was sort of later in my undergraduate career that I realized that actually there are evolutionary biologists out there who actually go to the field and, um, you know, study organisms in nature, do experiments in order to um, test some of these ideas. And, uh, you know, that, um, well, that was a revelation to me. I wasn't planning to go to grad school at all when I was an undergraduate, just because I was feeling a little burned out. Um, but in my last year, um, a professor from uh, Queen's University in Kingston came and gave a talk on just, uh, it was a talk on uh, evolution of territorial behavior in hummingbirds. And uh, I, I went to his talk. I, I should tell you that I also, I skipped class to go see this talk because my mentor said I thought, he thought I would be interested in it. And uh, it was sort of at that point after hearing his talk that I just realized that um, you can actually study evolutionary processes in natural populations in, uh, in the field. And uh, so I talked with him afterwards and he told me that um, his supervisor, who was working on uh, Galapagos finches, was um, looking for new students. So I wrote to him and uh, applied. I, I had started to get interested in the problem of speciation when working on the Galapagos finches. Like, who doesn't? When, when you're working there. How did 13 species arise from a single common ancestor? And, and the pattern that we saw in these stickleback was very similar to that we see in the Galapagos finches and in other systems, especially island systems, where when two species occur together, they're more different from each other than when um, species occur by themselves. Our understanding of speciation, I would say, has completely transformed since uh, I began studies of the problem and, and, and others maybe 20 years ago. And it, it was a transformation in our thinking about what the origin of species actually is. I just got several new students and so we're thinking about um, new projects. But um, um, most of them will be experimental projects you know, we're again becoming interested in the question of uh, how do interactions between species um, cause greater differences between them. And initially, uh, the focus was on, um, say, competitive interactions between two species. How, when two forms came together in a lake, how did they, you know, by, by what interaction did they evolve into what is what we now call the, the, the modern day benthic and the modern day uh, limnetic. Originally the focus was just on competitive interactions between the species, but we now realize that it's, uh, it's much more than that. And it's not just that the uh, species interact in many more ways than we realized. What we think is probably even more important is that uh, when each species adapts to the other, and uh, becomes, as a consequence, more different. This changes their interactions with all the other species that they interact with in the lake. My lab has always been um, something like four students, a couple of postdoctoral fellows, and um, usually two or three undergraduates. If I look back at, uh, at all the studies that we've done, uh, every last one of them, I think, has involved uh, undergraduates. So I guess the better question would be what discoveries have not involved undergraduate students.